Hello and welcome to another episode of the Apple Bomb Bytes podcast. Today is episode number 46 already and today is going to be an amazing podcast. Uh, sadly, it will be the last episode together with our amazing co-host Alicia O'Regan Casabon, aka Alicia Plans on Instagram. Uh, Alicia, welcome back on the show. How are you? Um, it's bittersweet. I'm happy to be here, but I'm sad it's my last episode because it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Well, maybe in the future, uh, we see you back as a co-host. If you want to see Alicia back, please let us know in the comments below. Alicia, come back, please. Something like that. <laughs> that would be really appreciated. Uh, but Alicia, we have an amazing guest here for your last episode because it's the one and only Gordon Tima. He is the sales director of Europe, but also the global director of e-commerce. Uh, so welcome uh, on the show, uh, Gordon. How are you? Very good. I'm very excited to be here today and to spend the next couple of minutes um, talking about my favorite topic, which is That's pens. great. That's great. That's great. Yes, uh, really uh, grateful to have somebody of Lamy here on the show because, of course, Lamy is like an iconic brand in the writing industry. Uh, I think uh, if we're talking about luxury pens, uh, Lamy sells the most pens like individual pieces uh, over the entire world. Correct me if I'm uh, wrong, Gordon, but at least that's what I think. If you take into account that the Safari is also a luxury fountain pen, I think that you sell a lot of them. But before we start the podcast, we always do the pen check. And Alicia, I would like to ask you to start with your final pen check. The pen check. This was actually the hardest one for me to do because I collect Lamy safaris mm -hmm. and I wanted to show a safari. Um, so I'm going with my favorite color one at the moment and it is the Candy Mango. This is nice. one of my brightest pens that I own. And I think coming out of autumn and into winter, I just needed something that was a little bit of sunshine in my life. So that is mine. And this one is a medium nib. It's a really nice one. What ink do you have in it? Um, this one, I have a sample in it and I lost the label for the sample, so I haven't oh. been able to find it again, but I think it's Dominant Industry Earl Grey Tea. Oh, That's nice, the nice, closest match I have found to this sample so <laughs> far, so I could be wrong. It's a nice one. It's a nice uh, matchup. Uh, Gordon, what fountain pen do you carry with you today? Um, today, I, of course, have a Lamy um, in this, in this case. <laughs> Uh, what I'm bringing with you is um, a limited edition we just brought out, which is our Scala Majestic Jade. Um, some people would wrongly call it um, the Tiffany Blue. Um, it's very similar, I would assume, but um, that's just in the eye of the, of the observer. Um, the fantastic about this um, pen, in my opinion, is um, besides the fact that it's limited to 1,500 units, I mean, that has a golden nib. And the color itself, um, if you put it into the light, is not very. It's not a flat color, but it has a little bit of glitter in it, uh, which makes it, in my in my opinion, very special, and um, therefore my favorite pen of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can it's imagine beautiful. it. It's a really beautiful piece. Uh, we sold out in it really quickly, so that was a little bit sad. I don't know if it's still available somewhere in the world, but I know that it's really limited uh, in pieces. So if you can still find one. Cool. Send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia is still waiting for a Christmas gift. So, you know, if you if you want to give Alicia a Christmas gift, that's an amazing gift. Uh, no, it is such yeah. a beautiful pen. One of my friends has one of them. And just especially if you're writing and there's a little bit of light hitting it, that glitter is so beautiful and so subtle. It's very nice. It is very nice. All right, let's have a look at my pen check because, of course, I also have a really, really nice Lamy with me today. And actually, it's quite a special edition uh, because it is uh, a Lamy Studio and it is the pink one, uh, or actually the rose uh, officially called. But this is not the matte rose that we have seen all over the internet already and which is quite a popular color because this is the glossy rose. I don't know if the camera picks it up uh in a right way but this is the uh, glossy rose i also have the matte rose here next to it and you kind of see the differences if the lights hit it in a good way uh, nevertheless this is the glossy one and it has a an 14 karat gold nib on it which is also different than the standard matte rose special edition is that the word standard special edition i don't know but at least 
this is really special because you can barely find it on the internet we are one of the few stores that have it uh, and if you want one you have to be quick we only got 25 pieces and uh, there are only 850 pieces worldwide so if you want to have one be quick head over to our website we have it and we can send it to you uh, really nice really parts. nice yes 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 um all right that's enough for the pen checks uh before we start this whole podcast in gordon i have a question for you uh from our previous guest which was uh linda divonzo from aurora the export manager from aurora and her question was how important is writing in your life um, um i heard that question when i was listening to podcasts and uh, i had a couple of minutes to think about it so it's probably <laughs> competitive advantage in this case <laughs> Um, but what I can say is um, I would like to answer this question from my private life. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I think over the past couple of years, um, when I think about special occasions, I'm talking about weddings, I'm talking about birthdays, I'm talking about Christmas, um, there is a tendency of um, writing messages. I'm talking WhatsApp messages, Facebook messages. And what I realized is um, it's so easy to write a message. It's so little effort. Um, while it was probably a good feeling 15 years ago, right now I think it's just overwhelming the amount of messages you receive. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, what I changed a couple of um, years ago is um, I started writing cards again. So I'm writing Christmas cards. I'm writing um, birthday cards. Um, I'm writing uh, Easter cards. I'm writing, if there's a new child is born, I'm writing cards. So every special occasion that, um, but also the sad ones, um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to use um, to write cards, um, to really personalize those messages to the receiving end um, and to give the other person that one feeling which only cards can do, which is the wow moment, the moment you open the post box, you take out the card, you think, who wrote me there? Um, mm -hmm. And at the end, you open up the card, you read the message, and it's just that warm feeling I would lo love to share with um, with my friends and family. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the only opportunity to have today is um, to show your appreciation through writing in cards or letters or whatever it is. I mm -hmm. think that um, showing the value and the appreciation to others um, by really sitting down um, using a cold moment, not with your cell phone, but with your hand and the pen and the paper. Um, it's quite, quite, um, yeah, it's an important, important role in my, important thing in my life. Um, I, would, I would love to continue that. I can, I can imagine that. I think also, you know, that a letter, a handwritten note or a handwritten letter or a postcard or whatever is much more powerful compared to that quick message that you can send through WhatsApp or other uh, messenger place. Um, indeed, you know, a, a handwritten note is so much better to receive and to actually feel it. Alicia, do you also write a lot of letters? I do. I come from a card family, so we send cards for everything. I also keep every card that I receive. So I have like a little like accordion folder that has like everything from like when I was a child, like I have early birthday cards my mom kept all of my christening cards all of my communion cards everything so i have oh, really nice. a stash for my whole life even i have one stash that's birthday cards and there's there's quite a few of them looking at them actually makes me realize how old i am but it's nice <laughs> to have them all there <laughs> that's the dangerous part you know collecting mm -hmm. them all you know the box is getting bigger and bigger like, and then like, at oh, the oh, end this 21st oh, wow. birthday card i got that a while ago <laughs> Oh no no no! Well, that's a really nice uh, way of uh, of of using your pens, uh, Gordon. I uh, I agree on that. Um, and of course, you can use some beautiful Lamy pens in that because last year or last year this year 2023, Lamy came out with a lot of beautiful special editions. Uh, shall we just take our time machine and go back to uh, February of uh, this year and have a look at the Safari pens that uh, came out? Because they were in some beautiful uh, colors. I have them here. Um, and I hope that I name them correctly if I say that it's the aqua sky, the spring green, and the light rose. Um, 
And Couldn't have I done it better. <laughs> I think that the, those are two, three beautiful colors. Uh, they did very well uh, in, in sales wise, but I also like that um, the, the pastel tones on it because that's really like fashion uh, trend of this year, right? The pastel tones. Uh, so those were really nice. Alicia, are they, those in your collection already? No. Oh. Um, the store that I would was previously buying all of my Lammies from closed down this year. Um, I used to go in person to buy all of my Lammies, um, and they sold out of them the day they released. Oh, that's really sad. That's really sad. But luckily, I can help you out with that. So no worries. We will figure that yeah. out. <laughs> I, you know, I keep like the website open for when we do these, so I can just scroll through and add everything to my cart. <laughs> it's a dangerous big cart, I think, by now. Mm -hmm. um, but Gordon, can you tell a little bit about this process? I know it's been a long time because, of course, the process of designing things like this, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, it's months in preparation, especially with safaris and all-stars, which are made in huge quantities. Uh, mm -hmm. But can you tell a little bit more about this? About the process itself? Yes. Yeah. I mean, um, looking into colors or what is affecting certain the choice of colors um, is not not to be determined to one single decision point. Um, it's a couple of decision points where you look into what is happening next and besides you. Um, we're talking um, car colors. So we're talking um, what is happening in um, with the fashion industry, uh, which is a big one, what is happening in art. Um, and it's a, it's a big combination, of course, to anticipate um, what is happening in 2023 and what is in. Mm -hmm. um, I would say um, an, an additional one is what is the role of limited editions or special editions. The role, of course, is to pay, um, to, to really focus again on the, on the, on the model um, that we're bringing out. So in this case, on the Safari. If you look into the standard models, I would say they're very, um, yeah, they're very low key, um, like the Umbra, for example, which is the most sold one. Um, but on the contrary, if you look into the special editions which you're holding in your hand, they're very, very much sticking out, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's it's surprising um, that I think Lamy, which is very, very clearly focused on Bauhaus principles, um, is bringing out those colors. Um, mm -hmm. We wouldn't. We would do it only if the consumer is really wanting it um, and likes it. And like you just said, Joost, um, I think we hit we hit the nerve. Definitely, definitely. No, I really also like the matching clip. I forgot to mention that, but the matching colored clip is really nice. And in the standard collection, the clips of, are of course quite uh, basic uh, in, in in one regular color. Uh, but you already mentioned it. The Umbra is one of the most uh, sold piece. It's also the only piece, I think, in the standard collection which has a matte finish. Do you think mm -hmm. that's also one of the reasons that the, that the Umbra is sold the most? Or is it just because it's it's the most Bauhaus uh, principal uh, version of the uh, Safari? Oh, that's a good question. I think it always comes down to taste. Um, mm -hmm. Bauhaus, in principle, is understatement. Um, or, let's say, to put yourself second and not to... You know, not to come up with something that is really outstanding and people talk about. It's more something that you just have. Um, I think the matte one, which is certainly not the contrary of glossy, which is uh, shiny in that case. Mm -hmm. um, so I totally believe that, of course, someone who's buying Safari, someone who's buying Safari is buying Bauhaus and um, the matte just fits a little bit better. But as I said, come down to taste and... Yeah. Um, I also love how with the umbra that the nib actually matches the color of the pen. Definitely. Um, it's just a very like it's just a unified design, start to finish. I I love my umbra. I that's a miss. That's a, that is a missed point. You know, you could you could have made here a pink uh, nib on it, right? <laughs> Working maybe in the you. future, <laughs> maybe in the future, maybe in the future. Talking about the future, uh, because we know that the special edition colors of the Safari always always launch around February. Uh, can you tell us already, already, sorry, already a little bit about that, about mm -hmm. uh, how it's gonna look? Like you know, use is the uh, the best kept secret in the company. Um, <laughs> But um, I would love to give you a little bit more of the process where we where we get our inspiration from. Um, mm -hmm. If you looking left and right, especially into the fashion art um, um, industry, 
um, you will realize um, that, of course, in terms of colors, there is a natural end to um, the safari colors. And um, mm -hmm. we have to think a little bit outside of the box. So um, what I can promise you for 2024 um, is something that has never seen before, um, where we are also moving a little bit out of our comfort zone to really surprise our customers and our consumers. Um, I'm very excited about what is what is in the pipeline there. That's really cool. That's really cool. I'm really looking forward to it. Honestly, I have seen it already, of course, because the retailers uh, see things like this already a few months before because, you know, we need to place the orders and things like that. And I can just tell the people that it's going to be a really lovely color of choice. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be in mm -hmm. two editions, so not three in two. Uh, but furthermore, I, will, I won't say anything at all. Uh, just that's going to be really cool and it's really exciting. Uh, it's exciting to see that uh, there are multiple colors on this amazing edition. After the Safari, of course, the All-Star was launched earlier this year in two colors this time, the Petrol and the uh, Lilac. The Petrol and Lilac uh, I have here as well. Um, this is, of course, uh, they look quite similar to the Safaris, but with the aluminum, they have a completely different feel, and it's it's a completely different, um, um, a completely different pen actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, the clip is similar, the design is kind of similar, but because of the aluminum, it's completely different. Um, Alicia, what do you think uh, of Safari versus uh, All Star? Um, I love Safari because of how accessible they are. I recommend them to everybody. Um, but I do personally love my Petrol All-Star. I like mm -hmm. the weight of it a lot. Um, it's a little bit weightier than the Safari, but you can still write with it for a really long time without noticing the weight, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I love them. I think if for somebody who's starting with fountain pens, if you've got a lot of Safaris, and you're looking to branch out but stay within your comfort zone the all-star is the obvious next step i love them they're really great they're really <laughs> great um also for this uh all-star there are new two two new colors coming out in uh, in the new year uh it will be later in the year i think only april or something like that mm -hmm. um so i will not tell too much about it because then you have to wait for a really really long time but uh, i can tell that we will also see the two color designs here back as well, right, Gordon? Can I say that or not? Yeah, I mean, we, we got really inspired this time. And I think tone and tone is something you see all over the place. Um, if you look into interior design, this is something that is just on vogue. And um, it's definitely, we got a little bit of inspiration there. Let's let's put it that way. That would be really cool. Uh, Alicia, just, just talking between you and me, so Gordon is not here. What do you think that they did with the two colors? Like, do you think that they will put like a, a pink colored clip or whatever on it? Uh, or or what, how, how do you think that they will uh, put those two colors uh, together on this All-Star or Safari? I shouldn't say. <laughs> but um, I do know that whatever it's going to be, you, people are going to want us. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> I completely agree with you on that. All right. Um, the Dialog CC also came out in a new color. Uh, I think uh, you have one there, uh, Gordon. Maybe you can show it. Because, of course, the Dialog CC was launched in 2022 in two colors, in white and uh, blue. And this year, also, the all black uh, was launched. Yeah. It's a very masculine pen. I think the Dialog CC, in my opinion, is... One of the most complex um, mechanism we we have is a very unique mechanism where you can fold in, fold out the, the nib. Um, in this case, um, you mentioned two colors which are in the portfolio right now, which is the blue and the white ones. I think they have a slightly feminine touch, to be honest, um, from a coloring point of view. Um, so what was certainly missing um, was the light, slightly smaller one than the di than the dialogue um, in terms of size. And the mechanism is still the same and everything, even for an enclosure mechanism, it's all black, including the nib. Um, I think it's a fantastic pen. Right now I'm more into the um, All-Star, um, is my daily beater, mm -hmm. um, but I'm certainly moving right now into the Dialog CC, um, all black, because I think it's 
just a conversation piece. Um, how often have I have I been sitting um, at the airport? Um, of course, riding one of the, those cars I just mentioned, mm -hmm. and um, then people were asking me what a fantastic pen this is, um, and I just love it. It's a really, it's also an understatement, and with it all black itself, um, but it's something special, I would say, especially for the Christmas period. It's a really Might nice. Be a good piece. idea. <laughs> it's a really nice piece. Uh, just wondering because uh, so the Dialog CC is now one year in the assortment, so you can mm -hmm. kind of have a feeling like the Dialog Three versus the Dialog CC. Uh, there were were a lot of opinions about it online uh, because the Dialog CC is quite similar as the Dialog Three, just a little bit shorter, uh, without a clip, only with a roll stop. Uh, and most likely, I forget something. But uh, how do you see it back in terms of sales? How is the Dialog CC picking up uh, against the Dialog 3? Mm -hmm. It's um, picking up actually quite fast because you, you certainly have from the size of the product, from the size of the pen, you talk to two different consu um, consumers. Um, it's not the same person buying either the one or the other. Um, it's, um, it's very distinct, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So there, it's picking up quite nicely. Um, it's um, the consequence, of course, of moving into more masculine um, model is um, certainly a necessary step to to be able to pick up actually to the dialogue free, um, and it's something we had in mind for a long time. I'm very excited to have it now on the market. Really cool, really cool. Alicia, have you tried uh, the dialogue CC already? I have. I've actually tried both. Um, I do. So we can agree have a professional opinion said. about the differences. That's cool. <laughs> I That's do good. agree with what Gordon said about um, like how it is two different people who mm -hmm. who pick. I personally prefer the three because I am the kind of person that will drop my pen. I will allow it to roll off a desk if I'm on the go as well. I like to have a pen that I can clip on to the inside of my bag. Um, it's just down to personal preference, but I love a retractable pen. Like I'm a like gotta catch them all as if they're Pokemon. Um, <laughs> I I absolutely love both, but I think for me with a busy desk and lots of stuff on it, I I need something that's that's stay and put, especially <laughs> with not being able to lose a lid. It's a pen you cannot lose the cap for. It's that's brilliant. that's really smart. That's really <laughs> good in it. Well, if you're so much into uh, into uh, uh, retractable nips, I maybe have a nice set here for you. Um, I'm going to show it really carefully because it would be a shame if I drop it. Um, I have it here. It is a beautiful uh, Urushi set. It's on the dialog tree, actually, so it's not a dialog CC, but still. Um, it's all with Urushi in four different styles uh, for the four different seasons, of course. So right now we are... I cannot remember it, actually, anymore. Which was the autumn, anyway. I think this one, or maybe this. Uh, nevertheless, uh, beautiful set of Orushi pens. Uh, Gordon, is this something that uh, that's coming back, like a uh, new Orushi set with uh, with Lamy pens? Not not a set, but um, I would say in general that Orushi is certainly a very nice um, addition to our portfolio. Um, mm -hmm. Looking into something very special, very unique. Um, there are not so many available in the world. Um, and especially in those four that you um, just put up into the camera. Um, they consist um, where Summer is made by um, Norihiko, um, which is a Rushi master. Um, and the other three um, are made by Manfred Schmidt. Um, mm -hmm. So I think the, the complex um, process of, um, of, of um, giving, giving those pens this, this specific look um, is very complex, very unique. And then certainly if you... If you want something that your neighbor certainly does not have, <laughs> this is the right pen for you. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Alicia, uh, talking about Urushi, on which uh, Lamy pen, besides the Dialog 3, of course, would you like to see an Urushi lacquer on? It's so, it's so hard. Like, it's so hard <laughs> to pick one. Like, I think that just, just, just give me one that's coffee colored. And I, 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 I don't care which pen it's on. Just give me something coffee and and I'll have it but I I think it would be nice to get a an all-star that has like wow. an inner aluminium barrel nice heavy weight to it with the Ur Urushi on top because it crazy. would be something that 
like the all stars and the safaris everybody has one of these yeah but to have one that doesn't look like everybody else's crazy it would be amazing (laughs) that would be crazy um all right uh the last band that i would like to discuss that came out last year i already mentioned it a little bit was the studio in uh, matt rose of course a really nice piece uh, we saw many of them for some reason pink pants or rose pants uh they sell always very very well well now we just i already mentioned it but just again we also have the glossy version of it uh limited to only 850 pieces worldwide so it's 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 really really uh special and with a gold nip so that's really cool um gordon can you tell a little bit more about this yeah i mean um rose gold was was a huge success success i must say um it was requested by a lot of customers and a lot of retailers who really wanted this pen to come out um, in, in addition to the current portfolio Mm-hmm. Um, we do have um, a lot of um, understating colors, um, with, which is, of course, black, and um, which is our most sold pen, but still is very masculine, the entire portfolio. Um, so what we were looking into, and I think the success confirms it, is that um, the rose gold um, is, of course, a more feminine, um, f- feminine color. Mm-hmm. I want to put it into corners or whatsoever. Um, but uh, certainly got um, we certainly got the feedback um, from customers that there's um, something missing in the portfolio, and um, with the rose gold um, we brought something out that is actually hitting that nerve. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, I think this is also really suitable for a man, of course. It's not like uh, uh, counting uh, counting out uh, people, but uh, I can imagine that if you're saying uh, if you're saying that this is more like a feminine color, uh, I, I understand that. All right. Talking about new products, I also have some new products to announce. New products. No Lamy products, except, of course, for the Lamy Studio, of course. But I'm talking about the Visconti because Visconti presents a brand new collection with a divine look. Uh, the Apollo, Zeus, and the Aphrodite uh, and Athena are all the protagonists of the Mirage Mythos collection. The Greek mythology teaches that the Olympian gods are immortal beings governing the life and death of human beings. And this year, we celebrate the goddess Athena, who in ancient Greece was associated with wisdom, warfare, and handcraft. But will later, since the Italian Renaissance, become an international symbol of wisdom, the arts and classical learning. Alicia, what do you think of this Visconti Athena fountain pen? I've only had a small peek at it. It's beautiful. I love things that are based off of Greek mythology. I read a lot of books mm-hmm. on, on Greek mythology. So I think that to have a nice matching pen to annotate books like that with would be a, a lovely addition to my collection. Definitely, um, I think definitely. It's beautiful. I really like this collection with the uh, with uh, the reference to the Greek mythology. You know all mm-hmm. these uh, all these pens. It's a really nice touch. I think that Visconti did a great job on that. All right, let's have a look at my second product that I would like to announce. It is the uh, following the release of the limited edition 007 Spy Master Duo. Montegrappa returns to the realm of James Bond with a new all metal silhouette. The 007 special issue lifts up to its billing delivering dependable all-round proficiency with new accents on portability and steel. Machined from aluminum and brass, the disciplined industrial design of the 007 Special Issue uses sleek lines and sandblasted surfaces for maximum discretion. Inside, Revined Compentinary ensures incisive performance, expertly engineered for essential work. You can choose between a fountain pen and a rollable, but of course, we all know uh, your uh, choice, Alicia, for this one. But what is your <laughs> favorite James Bond movie, Alicia? I've been, I've, I've literally been thinking about this since we talked about this pen, and it's, <laughs> it's so hard for me to pick. Like I was raised on James Bond. We watched every movie in the cinema, and I think I'm gonna go with Goldeneye or A View to like a Kill, but like one it. or the two. But old school James Bond, um, I've kind of dropped off. The They're franchise. looking for a new James Bond, right? For the movies, Alicia. Yeah, I, I, I haven't watched the last three, I'll be honest. Maybe Gordon um, can uh, be the new James Bond. What do you think? 
working on it. <laughs> you already have the nice What's suit, your you favorite? know, so you're ready for it. And you were my inspiration today for the suit, so uh, you should be the new James Bond. <laughs> no, 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 definitely not, definitely not. Gordon, what is your favorite James Bond movie? That's a good one. I was uh, I actually I was uh, putting up on Google what are the James Bond movies, um, but I would say from the old ones it's Goldfinger. Yes. Um, I think the new ones are um, are great. I love all James Bond movies. I'm a huge fan, um, but mm -hmm. um, I would love I would rather go into the classics. Definitely, definitely. Good choice. All right, let's have a look at our last and final new product that I would like to announce. It, because it's a Twisby, is it, uh, it's the most popular uh, Twisby founder pen that's now available. It's in the new color, the Eco. It has rose gold metal details. They go now a little bit for that way with a lot of their new releases. And it can now be purchased with a cream colored cap and piston knob. The Twisby Eco is the most affordable piston fountain pen, and with a clear bell, you can see the amazing mechanism and, of course, the ink perfectly. Alicia, what color of ink would you put in this fountain pen to match the cream colored cap and piston knob? This is going to show how particular I am with ink matching. <laughs> I have a lot of Twisbys, and I have not purchased this one yet. Mm -hmm. simply because I cannot decide what ink I would want to put in it. I think I'd go for a really dark chocolate brown because one of the promo pictures for this pen was with white chocolate and I cannot get it out of my head because it is the perfect white chocolate It's color. not included, eh? so, so that you know that if you're I buying know, this Twisby, there's but, no chocolate bar included. But <laughs> if you buy it from Apple Boom, you do get a Stroop waffle. That's true, that's true. Maybe we have to so, think about adding that bar of chocolate. <laughs> I think it will be, it will be a huge promotion. I'd buy, it. I'd buy it instantly if white chocolate came with it, even if I didn't ink it. Just anything for chocolate. <laughs> Gordon, this is just, you know, a huge hint, you know. In 2025, bring out a chocolate colored Lamy Safari. Add a bar of chocolate and, you know, the sales will explode for sure. I'm not sure well, legally a... if you're allowed to send chocolates all over the world, but... That's something there's a, there's a there's a lamp there's a lamy the maroon maroon one that's kind of chocolate colored yeah. that's a, a gorgeous pen yeah the room my of, collection <laughs> I, agree. I mean the room of interpretation of colors is um, always very broad but for 2025 we keep that idea definitely in mind <laughs> like that chocolate and coffee Exactly. Always a good Best combination. combination yeah. Always a good combination. All right, Alicia, do you have a question uh, for Gordon? I do, and it, it 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 is a bit of a difficult question. Um, if you could pick only one color Lamy Safari as your favorite of all time, what color would it be? How many colors of Lamy Safaris are there actually? Oh, well, uncountable. With all the yeah. special editions, it's, it's even in. Dev yeah, there's, there's a lot. There have been many who tried collecting them all. So, uh... <laughs> um, oh, that's a very tricky question because, um, of course, I love them all. Um, no, but to be honest, um, if really, if, if there is one safari color where I believe that the brand really grows in, or where you re when you look at the pen and say, well, this is a Lamy Safari. Um, I would this time, against all odds, go for the Umbra one. Um, why is that? Because I love understatement. Um, I don't like um, I like I don't like to be loud with my with my writing instruments. I think everyone has different tastes, um, but I would go with the Umbra probably. Understandable. It's it's beautiful. I I tried to answer this one myself, and it was between the Umbra and the special edition ice cream one. Because this yeah. is like, there's just something about like all the bright, colorful ones are amazing, but you need something that just matches everything as well. And I think the Umbra and the the ice cream one do that. It yeah, has a personal touch, right? I mean, it's um, I like that. I really like that too. No, the Umbra is it. It is something special in I think in the Safari range, because yeah, once again, it's the only one with a matte finish. The only one with uh with matching metal details so it, it is it's kind of unique in its way and that's what i really like um yeah so uh gordon we are uh, already a little bit at the end of the show is there something else that you would like to uh, share with us 
An, an open question. Open I didn't question. expect that one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what is there to share? Um, I have, I haven't been, I haven't been in the pen industry for a very long time, I must say. Um, so, um, everything is new to me. And, um, I think you also, we met a couple of um, months ago. Um, and then when I met you, that passion that, um, you are, you are having for, um, for pens in general and, um, for the consumer is outstanding. I really like that. Thank um, you. Thank you. I must I must say the 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 the, the, the level of detail um, everyone who loves pens is into. So you're talking about we're talking about nips, we're talking about clips, we're talking about basically every single piece of every single pen. Um, it's it's just it's so incredible and uh, it's catching on. I'm serious. Um, I think my my I have to convince my wife. Um, to find a bigger um, a bigger place because by the amount of pens I'm starting to collect right now. <laughs> and I was already a huge fan of pens before that, don't get me wrong, but of course, uh, let's say acceleration level is at 100, so <laughs> uh, we're getting there. But no specific question, just my, my share of enthusiasm um, because um, I love that passion and um, I see what you're doing is right in there. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. That's great. Um, well, before we uh, end the show, Gordon, we always ask uh, our guests to come up with a question for our new guest. Uh, so what is your question uh, that we can start the next show with? Mm -hmm. Fantastic one. Um, I think what is bringing, bringing, um, bringing to life what I just said um, what is your top tip um, for someone using a fountain pen? I like I think it. it's a very it's a very tricky question. No, but it's, <laughs> it's a also great one. Broad one. It's a great one. We always have that question in our pen fan series, so it's a really great question uh, because oh. yeah, that's what everybody wants to know, you know. And you can go for a tip to a beginner, to one to an experienced writer, or to, you know, to, it's a tip for everyone. Uh, so, what is your top tip for someone? that is using fountain pens. I'm going to ask that. All right. One last thing before we end the show, Gordon, just uh, putting you on the spot here, but you know, that's how I am. Um, are there any plans for a Lamy 2000 in an exciting new color besides the black, the blue and the red that we have already seen? Um, no concrete plans, to be honest, um, but uh, what I can share is um, 1966, um, the first Lamy Safari, uh, sorry, Lamy 2000 came out. So, um, so in the past, um, I got told uh, <laughs> that every 10 year anniversary, um, there's something special coming out. Okay. I think 2026, which is still some some time out. I know that. No, but, but I think that you are already working on the pro on the projects for 2026, right? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, uh, Gordon, I would really like to thank you uh, for joining us here on the podcast and being our guest, sharing uh, all your love for Lamy, of course, and explaining a little bit more about how it's going there in, uh, in a company like that. Really appreciate it. Uh, maybe one day we come over uh, to Heidelberg and, uh, and uh, look inside the factory of uh, how everything is going. Just inviting myself sure here, but that's okay. Um, um, Alicia, Alicia, I would really like to thank you for uh, being my co-host for the last five episodes. It's been a blast. I had a lot of fun with you, and hopefully, uh, well, we uh, we see you back in the future in uh, one way or the other way. We will definitely keep following you on your Instagram account, Alicia uh, for sure. Thank you. And uh, yeah. Was no, amazing. it's been an absolute pleasure to be here. Um, I've this has been the highlight of my week, the amount of laughs that we have, and just yeah, my my cart is ever growing of what pens I'm going to be getting. So I've loved and appreciated every moment of the past five weeks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, all right, everybody, thank you so much for watching or listening to our uh, podcast through Spotify or Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast station you're using. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to do that right now. And otherwise, you can just follow our podcast through your favorite stream. Uh, next week, we see you again with a new guest and also 
with a new co-host. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.